haven't decided between the I-75 FAR CRAM or the I-75 FAR Complete course, well, let me tell you this. Only get the CRAM course if your exam is next week or the week after. Otherwise, sign up for the I-75 FAR monthly subscription because it's everything you're going to need to pass the FAR exam. And, of course, you can cancel anytime, and you can even reach out to me, and I'll cancel for you. You know business combinations is going to be on your exam. And let's start out by saying that there's three types of business combinations that you have to know something about. There's a legal merger, a legal consolidation, and a legal acquisition. And they kind of all sound similar, but no. A legal merger and a legal consolidation, I have it in red here, because I want you to know that consolidated financial statements would not be required. In fact, you wouldn't consolidate with financial statements for a legal consolidation or legal merger. I know the vocabulary here is sometimes you wish they'd choose different words, but in a legal consolidation, you will not prepare consolidated financial statements, nor will you do that in a legal merger. The only place you'll see that is in a legal acquisition. So the question will say it's a legal acquisition, then you know that consolidated financial statements will need to be prepared. Why? Because when they report to the SEC, the SEC requires consolidated financial statements. So why wouldn't the SEC require it for a legal merger or a legal consolidation? Let's see. Start with a legal merger. In a legal merger, companies A and B combine, A survives, and the assets and liabilities of B are recorded on the books of A, and company B ceases to exist, and now you have all of B's assets and liabilities already on company A's books, so you wouldn't need consolidated financial statements because the two companies are no longer separate entities. All you have is a larger company A and a company B that ceased to exist. That's a legal merger. What's a legal consolidation? Well, A and B combine. They form company C, a brand new company, and the assets and liabilities of A and B are recorded on the books of new company C, and both A and B cease to exist. So in a consolidation, a new company emerges out of two companies that cease to exist. And the assets and liabilities of A and B are going to be recorded on the books of the new company C. So there'd be no reason to have consolidated financial statements because you no longer have separate entities. Just like in a merger, you only have one survivor. In legal merger, A survives. In legal consolidation, neither A nor B survive. C is the only survivor. So now let's talk a little about a legal acquisition because now A is going to acquire a controlling interest in B over 50% and both A and B are going to continue to exist and they're going to continue to exist as separate legal entities. No entity will cease to exist here. A will still continue, B will still continue, but A will control B by owning over 50% of the stock. Now, in an acquisition, the assets and liabilities of the acquired entity B will not be reported on A's separate books. Instead, those assets and liabilities of B will remain on B's books. And this is why the SEC would require A and B to file consolidated financial statements because they're separate entities, and the SEC would require that separate entities report consolidated financial statements when there's control by one common management. So what can they ask you here? Companies A and B combine to form company C, and A and B both cease to exist. This describes which form of business combination? And the answer is C, consolidation. When companies A and B combine to form company C, and A and B both cease to exist, this describes a legal consolidation. Stock of A and B are both canceled, and the new stock is issued in company C. And of course, consolidated financial statements are not needed in a legal consolidation because only one entity exists. You would need separate entities in order to require consolidated financial statements. So this question asks companies A and B combine to form company C, A and B both cease to exist. This describes which form of business combination and the answer is a consolidation. But just because it's a legal consolidation doesn't mean that consolidated financial statements are required. In fact, they're not required. C is correct. All right. How about this one? Companies A and B combine and company B ceases to exist. 
This describes which form of business combination? Is it A, merger, B, acquisition, C, consolidation, or D, all of these? And the answer is A, illegal merger. Companies A and B combine, company B ceases to exist, they tell us in the facts. This describes illegal merger. Stock of B is canceled, and all of B's assets and liabilities are transferred to company A's balance sheet. Since the entities are combined on the date of acquisition, post-combination consolidation is not necessary because all the assets and liabilities are already recorded on the acquirer's books, and that would be company A. So this question said that companies A and B combine and company B ceases to exist, and this would describe a legal merger. Answer choice A is correct. How about this? A Corp acquires B Corp in a business combination involving two public entities. Consolidated financial statements would be required if the business combination were a one, legal merger, two, legal consolidation, three, legal acquisition. And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And remember to like and subscribe so you never miss an I-75 upload. And if you need more help with business combinations or any part of the CPA FAR exam, go to I-75CPAReview.com and get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.